Good morning everyone and welcome to our webinar on recovering time for finance. Um, just first a little bit of housekeeping. Um, the webinar today will be one way, as in you will be able to hear us but we won't be able to hear you. However, you will be able to type any questions into the panel on the right hand side. Um, we will allow time for questions at the end of the session. The agenda for this morning's session is on the screen is on the screen now and we perceive this will only take around about 30 minutes um, allowing us for a couple of minutes questions and answers at the end so first will be a little bit about myself and my colleague the role of finance accounting intelligence with an insight a little bit about insightsoftware.com and then a, a brief product demonstration and my name is Julie Bowen and I'm an account manager at insight software um, I've, I work with both existing and new customers and I've got 20 years experience as a management accountant. The past 13 of which has been spent as an experienced ERP consultant on both finance and purchasing. I joined Insight in 2005 when I saw our software um, in, a light, in a presentation and I've, I've, I've not regretted that decision since. Also with me today is my colleague Sue Whittaker who's one of our product specialists. She's an experienced ERP consultant also and joined Insight in 2007 from one of our customers. Now the role of finance is definitely changing um, and I, I feel that it's moving more from a back office function very much to the forefront of organisations and this is making things come to a crossroads. In today's tough economic climate, CFOs and their teams are often being called upon to provide more advice to the business. Whilst enhancing the cost effectiveness of performance analysis, reporting and transactional management. Balance sheets come under even more intense stakeholder scrutiny and CFOs are also increasingly becoming the public face of the enterprise. In order for companies to leverage the full value of their finance functions, they need to ensure that management information is clear and more important forward looking. Technology should be used to free resources for value added tasks. ERP solutions are great for putting in place processes, but they're notoriously difficult at information retrieval. Complicated business structures and trading in multiple regulatory regimes adds increased pressure onto finance. And unfortunately, due to growing data volumes, finance functions still spend the bulk, amount, bulk of their time on data gathering rather than analysis, which is a waste of very expensive qualified resource. So, what is accounting intelligence? Most finance departments are under increased pressure to close the books quicker and this is often intensified if you have to report to a parent company with very strict timelines. Accounting intelligence is a concept that lets finance recover time and one of the ways this can be done is by automating the repeatable processes. Each month end, quarter and year end, the same report packs have to be produced by finance. And what I've seen happening in many organisations, both as a consultant and places that I've worked, is that massive data dumps have been done from the database, then this information is consolidated up to create the report. But the same process is carried out every month. The time cons spent consolidating this information is non-value add in my opinion. So by having real-time reports that can be run directly from the database saves many hours and days as these reports don't break the link to the data. It is simply a mouse clicker way to view transactions that make up any summary figure. These reports can be run at any point in the month, so prior to closing the month, it's easy to see if the correct postings have been made, such as accruals. Because these reports are produced faster, it means that more time is freed for, for analysis, making for better business decisions. Now when finance distribute reports to the business after the month end, it's usually just a matter of time before the phone starts ringing, emails fly around from inquisitive business managers who want to know how these figures were made up. So why not let them answer the questions themselves and give them their reports in a self-service manner, with drill down to the underlying transactions and back to the sub-ledgers to analyse the costs. Now one of the things that often takes up a lot of time in finance is time spent with both the internal and external auditors. And we've got some great examples from our existing customers how Insight is actually helping the audit them to answer audit questions. One customer has given their internal audit department a license of our console which is our self-service um, license in order to let the internal auditor run their own reports. 
Now, auditors generally want to know what makes up a particular figure, so by giving them drill down, they can answer their own questions. Most importantly, they have complete confidence in the figures as they have been produced directly from the database. In another example, one of our pharmaceutical customers sat with the external auditors with a copy of Insight open and addressed all their questions immediately. Now, auditors have to have confidence in the accounts in order to sign them off, and this customer genuinely felt that Insight had helped them to speed up this process. Here are some examples of um, how, how many days our customers feel that they've recovered. As part of the preparation for this webinar today, we've polled our customers, and this is the feedback that we got. Now, obviously, the size of an organisation and the complexity of reporting plays a part, but every customer saw a genuine time saving, and the quote at the bottom from Daniel Wise at Labbrooks really sums it up. So, giving man business managers self-service information. A huge amount of time in finance is lost to answering questions from other parts of the business. Even more so now when, when spending is often scrutinised and better payment, discount terms have been demanded by companies. Um, just last week I was working with a purchasing manager and his main frustration was that he couldn't get any simple metrics out of Oracle. And he would have to keep going back to either finance or IT to ask simple questions such as how much had he spent with a particular supplier over a given time period, what discounts did the supplier give? Did they deliver on time? What invoices didn't have a PO attached to them? And this is all information he needed to be armed with when a supplier turned up to see him. We've now given him all this in, our, in a self-service format and finance have gained back the time they used to spend retrieving the information for him. We also have many public sector companies using Insight and um, these are often bogged down with what we call parliamentary questions in the UK or freedom of information requests but basically these are requests for ad hoc pieces of information so it's very you can't actually write a report within Oracle for something where you don't know what the question is going to be so using Insight's predefined templates that recognize the structure that you've defined in Oracle make these requests simple and literally cut the time down from sometimes days to minutes So whilst the pressures on the finance departments increase, you often have to adapt the tools that you already have. So whilst the demand for information is constantly growing, the ability unlock the, to unlock the data inside the Oracle database is still a challenge. Reports are one-dimensional and the information is very static. There's also a limited drill down, but the biggest issue for most accountants is they're perceived to be a technical tool and most accountants wouldn't actually know the underlying database structure. BI is often seen as a solution to all reporting, but in reality BI is designed to provide summary management information, dashboards, KPIs, but not real-time operational data. On the right of the screen we've got Excel, and in my opinion the biggest strength is also the biggest weakness in, in that it gives too much flexibility. And once information is in a spreadsheet, it can be manipulated in any way. I've actually seen in the past adjusting journals being entered straight into a spreadsheet and never being entered back into uh, the underlying ERP solution. This, this is a SOX nightmare. And all of the examples above actually break the link to the finance, financial information held in Oracle. So surely there's got to be a better way. Now the main thing that sets accounting intelligence apart is that it's been written by accountants for accountants and that means we understand the business challenges of producing timely information in a meaningful manner. Finance functions are no longer just expected to produce mon monthly reports but also add to add business benefit and here are some of the features that really illustrate that this is an end-user application. What we've done is we've understand the underlying Oracle structure so when the software is installed it allows you to run inquiries on, over any of your defined segments within Oracle. This makes it easy to consolidate as we can also consolidate multiple sets of books or ledgers depending on if you're on 11 or 12 of Oracle. And we also use the Oracle security so every single customer of ours has spent time defining security within Oracle 
So why let somebody run information into an access database or a spreadsheet that doesn't adhere to the security? So just to recap, accounting intelligence will empower the finance department to provide better business decisions based on real-time operational reports that don't break the link to the underlying data. And this will truly speed up the financial process as the time to gather the information is just simply a mouse click away. Accounting intelligence is an end user tool that is controlled by finance with minimal input from IT. 95% of our user base are outside of IT. As the software reads the structures that you've already set up in Oracle, there's minimal training required as finance obviously understand the structure of the information. Accounting intelligence solves core e-business suite issues that get in the way of people doing their real jobs. Insightsoftware.com are a global organisation made up of many ex-professionals, a lot of who have worked at Oracle itself. We're very much consulting light in, because the software is so easy to use and picked up by accounts. We don't recommend that anybody needs more than two days training and as a testament to that, only 5% of our turnover comes from services. Also on the screen, you may notice at the bottom, we're very proud that we received last October the most innovative product of the year award from um, the Oracle user group, which really is testament to the in innovative um, application that we're about to show you. Now just quickly before we jump into the software, here are a few, few examples of our customers some of which you may have heard of. If anybody wants any, um, any more information about any of these, if they could let us know at the end, we'll be more than happy to give that. But at this point, I'm now going to hand over to my colleague, Sue Whitaker, who's going to give you a brief presentation of Accounting Intelligence by Insight. Okay, thanks, Jules. Okay, so what we aim to achieve in the product demonstration is to highlight how you can save time within the finance department by either running predefined reports with flexible filters and drill down capabilities or being able to respond to ad hoc information requests. So on the screen I have open a report pack which contains a suite of reports that are used regularly and will be part of a repeatable process each month and in the run up to month end. And this should hopefully give you a very good overview of the different types and styles of reports that can be achieved within Insight. So this first report in this pack is from the General Ledger, where we've imported a parent-child hierarchy structure from the account segment. And we've brought in three years' worth of data, and a calculation has been added onto this report to give this year's movement in comparison to last year's. Now, even though this report's already been created, we can change and add things into this report to help us answer the questions that are important right now. So, for example, we might now want to highlight which accounts yearly movements are more or less than the previous years. And to do this, we can conditionally format that total calculation. So we put on here, if that's greater than zero, then let's highlight that value in red. Then if you want to investigate any of these accounts where the movement is greater this year than last, then we can drill down into the detail. So if we drill down into advertising, into the transaction summary, then this will tell us the source of that journal for advertising. We can see that it's come from accounts payables. So for now from here, we can drill down further into more transactional information, which is an integration of your general ledger, purchasing and payables information all on the same screen. Now, from here, we can jump across now to the subledger itself. So if we take this purchase order number, we can go across into the purchasing subledger, which now details the purchase order number, the requisition, the item that was on there, and how much that's been ordered and billed. And as you'd expect, we can drill down even further into the requisition itself. Now all these drill downs are from our standard predefined templates, but if you feel you want extra information on any of these reports, you can easily add that from all the extra fields that we have available. So you might want to put in here the requester. So if we add that into the report and put that to the top of our display. 
and run that again. Okay, so from a predefined yearly summary report, we were simply able to change the formatting and to drill down to the underlying transactional data and across the pertinent subledger information. So on this next report, this is highlighting a request that comes through time and time again, and that's to be able to report over multiple sets of books or ledgers in the one report. Now in this example, you can see that I've put in my expense account range into the account filter up here, and we've pivoted all of the ledgers that I'm interested in reporting in. Now all of these ledgers are currently in US dollars, however if they were different currencies then we could bring in the translated currency from this filter here. And again you have drill down functionality from this report into the underlying transactional detail. If I move on to this next report, this is from the payable subledger. And we were at a customer's recently and a couple of key people couldn't attend the meeting because they'd been given them the task of producing a report that showed who their top 10 suppliers were and how many invoices they produced for a whole year. Now this for them was going to be a large extraction of data that would then need to be consolidated up the level that this report was required in. Now this report on the screen was created from one of the predefined templates in the AP subledger within Insight. And as well as displaying the top 10 suppliers and the number of invoices per supplier, we've also put it into a graphical format. Now, all graphs can also be changed, and we could plot the number of invoices onto the graph, onto a second axis, so it's a line going across the, uh, the bar chart. So this gives a, a really nice uh, visual representation of your top 10 suppliers as well as the raw data. Now this next report is from the purchasing subledger and gives great visibility of all the accruals listed out in detail with the associated purchase order numbers and requisition details if there are any and what the items are on each of the purchase orders. Now typically people would want to see this across the departments and cost centres to see how much would need to be accrued for each month per department. So if we add this onto our report and if we subtotal by the department and if we run this again, then this will detail all the accruals per department. And it's worthwhile noting at this point, because I don't think we've mentioned it yet, that this has got a real lifetime connection to your Oracle database. So there's no overnight staging of data, no extraction tools that are required, and it will then just display the live data. So any new journals that are put on can instantly be um, reported over. Actually, one, one thing you could show, Sue, when I was um, on site last week, I was sat with one of the management accountants and he got a phone call from his finance director. Um, he, the guy was going to attend the sales and marketing meeting the next day and he'd been asked um, if he could present the sales figures for the last year consolidated into quarter with a grand total. So the guy that I was sat with went into um, panic mode, but we managed to create that in in insight, so you might that might be quite a good thing to show. Okay. All right. Well, I understand why they went into panic modes because um, if I was given that request, I'd also start panicking, and I'd probably want to call in every single favour owed to me from our systems accountant or our IT department, just to be able to extract all the relevant data to then manipulate into the format that I want and that I think that the FD would want to see it in. So by having these predefined templates and insight, I know I've already got a really great starting point to get this data myself and into the format that I need it in. So if I put in my um, revenue account range into one of my filters as a starting point, and if I change this report to look at my period date values, and we're not interested in the current period because he wants all of the quarters and a total for the year, I want to consolidate this report so that we're just showing the account. So if we run this report, this should hopefully give the FD what he wants as a starting point, which will be all of my revenue accounts with each of the quarter's totals and a total for the whole year. Now, 
Obviously, as accountants, we all know that revenues are, tend to be displayed as negatives, so we can change the default formatting on this to reverse the signs, because you don't want to present negatives at a sales meeting. And we can also put this into a nice graph, which would look good in the, the finance director's or the CFO's presentation. So if we put on a graph, and again, if we just format this so that we reverse the signs, and like we did with the top 10 suppliers, we can plot the total on a second axis as a line going across the, the chart. Now, in order to try and preempt the next question and iteration of this report, I know that my FD or CFO typically likes to see data broken down by the department or the cost centre. So let's change this report and give him both options that he can run by account and by department. So I change it back to the data only. If I add on the department, and then subtotal by the department. And then if we run this again, we now have all the revenues split out by the department. So if we were to put this into a report pack and then give our FD or CFO access to this in the console, the self-service module, then he would be able to present this at his sales meeting. So by opening up this report pack in the console, he now has a very great um, visual representation of the revenues for last year with the raw data and also the second report that's by department as well and all the revenues. And the good thing about this now is not only was that easy to create, but by saving this away, we can now run this for any other year or to adapt to cover any other iterations that the FD wants. So we've been able to satisfy our FD's demands without losing the work and reports that we're already working on. So if we now go back to our report pack, we can look at some other examples of reports. So the next report in our report pack is from the receivables um, subledger, and it's one of the many key reports that uh, an AR department would want to get is to have an age debt report split out by each of the uh, responsible collectors. Many organisations have their own different ageing categories and buckets that are different to what's displayed in Oracle. So using the ageing categories in Insight, organisation specific ageing categories can be catered for. And from this, this should hopefully clearly highlight that you could have different types of receivables reports that could cater for bad debt provisions, what's due to come in this month, and using some of the other predefined templates of which there are many, you can get other instant reports like unapplied cash reports, history of a customer with all their invoices and receipts. Okay, so now if we were to look at this from a slightly different angle and the self-service aspect of Insight, from the perspective of purchasing manager, which follows Jill's example that she mentioned within the, uh, the PowerPoint at the beginning of the presentation, the purchasing manager could have his own report pack that contains reports that are again part of a repeatable process. And these will still give him drill down capabilities that will empower him to answer his own questions. And to have enough flexible filters to allow him to change the parameters of each report. So this particular report pack has got three key purchasing reports that the purchasing manager would want to run on a regular basis. The first report is all the purchase orders subtotaled by the commodity code and bringing in all the purchasing categories. And from here, like I said, it's still got ability to drill down so you can get down into the requisitions behind that purchase order. The second report in this report pack is, it's not a pretty report, it's just pure raw data. And it's so that the purchasing manager can have visibility of the number and the amounts of invoices that are being raised without a purchase order. So if I scroll down for this time frame, you can see that we've got 1.5 million of invoices that are going through without any purchase orders. So that gives them really good visibility of that information. This third and final report that we're going to show in this presentation, this is a nice concise report of all of your expense accounts and then pivoted across all of the departments. This gives your purchasing manager great visibility of all the organisation's spend and what the money was being spent on. And in addition, by using our calculation engine, comparisons between the departments could easily be analysed. Thank you very much, Sue. Um, I can see we've got a couple of questions come in. Um, so just to cover those off quickly, um, the first question um, 
Do we are we do we have the ability to report over the DFFs that people hold within Oracle? Okay, so if I go back to Insight, any descriptive flex fields that you might have against um, any of your um, subletter information, against the lines, the journals, they can easily be reported on and also be put created as a parameter, a flexible filter for you to run reports on. So if I just go into here and type in attribute, as you all know the descriptive flex fields are known as an Oracle, you can see that we've got quite a lot in our demo data and any that you'd have in your information would also be able to be reported on. And another question we've got here is, is it easy to export information to um, PDFs or Excel? Okay, and again, the answer is yes. If I go back to my report pack and to my age debtors report, if you want to export this out into PDF, then you can export to PDF or to um, Excel. But what you can also do on the print options is that we could say, give me a page break after every subtotal, so that we'd end up with a page per collector for the age debt reports. So if I now export this to PDF, I'll try and make this bigger on the screen for you to see. So we've got a page per collector, and as I scroll down, you can see that you've got a nice page with all of the age debt per customer. Equally, from an auditing point of view, you can put on a cover page that will timestamp it, tell you the parameters you've run the report for, and any calculations you might have included on the report. Thank you very much. Um, we have had a few more questions, but our time's really running out, so I think we're going to have to draw this to a close. If um, We will take the questions um, from the people that actually asked them, and if anyone's got any further questions, if they contact us, we're more than happy to answer those. So um, all that remains is to say thank you very much for joining this webinar this morning. Thank you. Thank you.